Hello wonderful viewer and welcome to What The Math. My name is Anton and today we're going to be talking about one of the unusual yet really really cool objects in our solar system known as Quawar. Now this is actually a dwarf planet and it's one of the few named dwarf planets that we have in our solar system and today I'm going to tell you all about it, everything that we know about it and what its name actually means as well. Welcome, enjoy the video. <laughs> So this object right here is also known as 50,000 Quawar. Quawar is actually a name of a deity or a god um, from the mythology of the Tongva people that actually reside in the Los Angeles area. And the reason why it's um, it's been named after the, that particular god is because uh, when this particular object was discovered, it was discovered near LA and the discoverers who are uh, Michael Brown and Chad Trujillo of Caltech decided to give the right of naming uh, this particular object to the native tribes uh, that actually reside in this area. Mostly because the tradition is that uh, all of these objects have to have some kind of a mythological name. And so they chose the name Quawar, which is a very important deity. I think, I believe it's actually the creator deity, the main god in their uh, mythology. Um, and so there it is. Now, what exactly is this object? As you can see, it kind of sort of looks like Pluto in terms of color at least and in terms of shape and that's because it is a dwarf planet or very likely is a dwarf planet mostly because of its size this is about thousand kilometers in diameter so this right here is about thousand kilometers and uh its mass and size is relatively similar to um, pluto's Charon. so if i show you Charon, and here we go this is Charon right here and the pluto uh pluto is right there so here's pluto and Charon. so uh it's about half the size of pluto but in terms of the actual diameter in terms of the actual mass it's it's a relatively large object so this is actually what Charon looks like this is the photos we took with the new horizons mission that you can kind of see the details on the surface there but let's actually go back to Quawar for a second. So I'm going to start with a few differences between Quawar and Pluto. The main difference is that because Quawar is actually a little bit farther away from the sun, and I'm going to demonstrate this by going or zooming out here and enabling orbits just to show you how, um, where it is and how far away it is. Uh, it's about 14 astronomical units away from Pluto. So this is Quawar right here. This is the or the red um, red ring right here is the orbit. This right here is Neptune. So it doesn't look very far, but it is actually pretty far. And this right here is Pluto. So this is the orbit of Pluto. Now 14 astronomical units sounds like a lot, but in um, Kuiper Belt terms, in the terms of like, these objects that are really, really far away, it's actually very relatively close. So Pluto and, and um, Quawar are not that far apart. But even though they're not that far apart, what's interesting about Quawar is that it actually gets almost no influence from Neptune, unlike other dwarf planets, or, or unlike other um, objects in this particular region, meaning that it actually has no resonance with Neptune, unlike um, Plutinos. And so this object is sort of like, it's, it's free to orbit the way it wants to orbit, and it doesn't actually receive any effects from anything, which is actually kind of interesting, which is why um, this object and similar objects to it are known as Kubewanos, which refers to these uh, classical Kuiper Belt objects that are basically just free to orbit the way they want to. And here we're going to make an orbit by increasing the time, so it's going to spin and orbit around the sun. Now we've discovered this object in 2002, but in 2007 we've also discovered this object. It actually has a moon. And the moon's name is Weiwat, which is uh, the name for the son of Kwawar in uh, Tongva mythology. And uh, because we found the moon, which is about 80 kilometers in diameter, this is about 80 kilometers, we can now, or I guess we now already have, calculated the mass of this object. I've actually made a video about it previously showing you how uh, the masses are calculated as long as you find one satellite. And you can check it out in this link right here. But basically, yeah, so now that we actually have this uh, satellite, and this is about um, 14,000 kilometers away from Quawar, you, or I guess we, can estimate the mass of this object and also its density. And so today we know that the density of Quawar and the mass of Quawar is kind of similar to other similar objects. And the density here is about half of that on Earth and very similar to density of Pluto. In other words, this is very likely to be a mixture of ice and rock. So it's an icy rock thingy. 
And being only a half the size of Pluto, or I guess similar size to Charon, this is a pretty large asteroid. So this is why it's not technically an asteroid, and very likely is actually a dwarf planet, which is why it's so spherical in shape. And now the interesting thing about this particular dwarf planet, or I guess similar dwarf planets to this, is that we now know that it does have a little bit of methane on the surface. And methane is actually kind of hard to hold on to if you're a smaller dwarf planet, uh, because if the gravity is not enough, methane just kind of escapes into the outer space. But this object seems to be able to hold it, meaning that it's actually possibly even more massive and has more gravity than we estimated originally, because if it does have methane, just like Pluto does, then maybe it's just a little bit larger than we thought it was. And in this particular game, you can kind of see that methane is represented by these like reddish, brownish, orangey patches, which is uh, what methane becomes after some time if it's exposed to solar radiation. It actually becomes something called tholine, and tholines are basically these uh, brownish materials that are only formed in space through ra being radiated by um, ultraviolet radiation from the sun. And so that's one interesting thing about um, Quawar, that we think actually it's, pr it's a pretty massive object. But the other thing about it is that we have detected signs of cryovolcanism on it, meaning that it has volcanoes made out of water. Basically, water gets spewed out here and gets deposited on the surface, although for this particular object, there's not a lot of it. There's actually not very much um, ice on the surface, and because of that, it's actually kind of dark. Its um, albedo is about 0.1, meaning that it actually absorbs about 90% of light that comes here and reflects only about 10%. It's actually a relatively dark object for, um, for all of the dwarf planets. It's even darker than Pluto, so it's kind of surprising that we were able to even find it. Although we've actually seen this object many, many times even before it's been, it was discovered. Uh, the first images of this object were found back in 1954, but obviously back then we had no idea what we were looking at. We possibly thought it was just a star of some kind. So this why, uh, that, that's why basically it was not actually classified early on. And let me just show you where Quawar is located in Universe Sandbox 2, so you get an idea of how far it is and how difficult it is for us to get there. So this is Earth right there, Jupiter. Uh, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, and Quawar, let's actually look for it. It's not very easy to find, but there it is. It is an object that's really, really far away. So this is about 43 astronomical units from the Sun, which means that it takes it about 284 years to orbit once. But because it's one of those free Kuiper Belt objects that can orbit wherever it wants and however it wants, it's actually not affected by anything. Uh, it, this is why it actually kind of makes it kind of special, and this is, a matter, as a matter of fact, is the largest Kibiwano, which refers to the objects that are not affected by Neptune or any other objects, including Planet 9, if it, if it actually does exist. So this is a pretty cool object. But another interesting thing about it is that um, we've discovered that there's very likely to be no liquid ocean on the inside. So it doesn't actually have any liquid ocean. So where exactly is the cryovolcanoes from? What happens to this particular object? Why does it have ice on the surface? Because without liquid water, having volcanism, cryovolcanism specifically, is very difficult. And so what we think may have happened to it is that it possibly received a collision, which actually warmed it up a little bit to the point where it started having uh, eruptions of water ice that then sort of caused some of the ice to be deposited on the surface, because to have this crystalline water ice on the surface, it has to have a temperature of at least minus 160 degrees Celsius. But currently, the temperature here is much, much lower. It's at two, minus 200, and that's after the collision. Um, before the collision, it was very likely to have been minus 220 degrees Celsius. So there is uh, a few mysteries about this object that we're still not sure about. So where is the water ice from? Did it receive a collision? And most importantly, where is the warmth coming from? And so we think maybe there is some kind of a radioactive material on the inside that sort of creates the internal heat that is possibly warming this up from the inside. Now the good news is that we might discover all of this if New Horizons mission decides to make a slight turn and visit this object and take some photos of it. This may actually happen, it still has not been confirmed, but it's possible. And if we don't really visit it this time, a new mission would take only about 14 years to reach this object, so uh, lucky. 14 years is a long time, but it's possible that we'll be able to see this in our lifetime.
And before we finish this video, let's actually just compare this object to other objects in our solar system, starting with Pluto. We're going to go open up Pluto, and this right here is Pluto system, and we're going to add Quawar just so you can see how big or small it is, and um, we're also going to compare it to Earth as well. So let's put it in orbit around Pluto, right next to Charon actually. So you'll get to see that it's actually really, really similar in size to Charon, but obviously much smaller than Pluto. And I think they might actually have a collision in a second because it's coming a little bit too close to Charon and Charon is attracting it gravitationally. And here we go. Very cool. So now there is two of them. And if you combine both of them, their size is actually going to be still a little bit smaller than Pluto. So Pluto is still a little bit more massive. So there's a collision between Pluto, Charon and Quawar. Now, what about in terms of size of Earth? So let's go to Earth and Moon simulation. And it's uh, it's still actually not particularly massive, but in terms of size, it's about one twelfth of the size of Earth. And this is what it looks like. So it, this is uh, Quawar right next to Earth. We can put it in orbit. And there it is. Not too small, not too big. And obviously, if it collides with Earth, everyone and everything on the planet will very likely die. And if you don't believe me, watch this. And one, two, three, choose a country, choose a country, and boom. Oh no, this is India. I think this is the end of India. So if it ever decides to come closer to our planet and then decide to collide, Unfortunately, everybody and everything on the planet will die because of this huge shockwave and earthquakes and tsunamis and everything else that follows this massive object that will create all kinds of destruction on our planet. Anyway, so that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. I'm actually fascinated with different dwarf planets that we've discovered in the last 10 or so years. And many of them were actually discovered by only two researchers, or possibly a few more researchers, actually, that I'm not really remembering right now. But the main ones are Mike Brown um, and uh, Chad Trujillo, which seem to appear in almost every paper I've read so far. And there's some kind of a firework that just happened there that was pretty beautiful. Um, as you can see, Earth has no green left on it, so this is death as you know it. So yeah, those two researchers seem to have done uh, quite a prolific work in finding all of these various objects that are now known as dwarf planets, or will possibly uh, be classified as dwarf planets very soon. Currently, we only have five dwarf planets that have been officially classified, and a lot more will be coming soon. And hopefully Quawar will get that as well, because it is very likely almost 100% certain to be a dwarf planet as well. Anyway, hopefully you learned something from this video and hopefully you enjoyed watching it. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe, like this video and share this with your friends. I'll see you guys in the next video where we'll talk about something else related to space, math or science. Thank you, game you later and as always, bye bye. And I'm going to go ahead and zero velocity, another collision. We can never have enough collisions in this game. This is so beautiful, but so scary. I really hope this doesn't actually happen one day, because, well, then I won't be making videos anymore, I guess.